Hello friends, Pastor Doug Batchelor here. You know, one of the questions that we get more than any other this time of year is, should a Christian celebrate Christmas? And so I'm going to take just a few minutes and address this very quickly. Uh, first of all, there's nothing in the Bible that tells us that Jesus was born the 25th of December. In fact, uh, we can be pretty sure he wasn't born that time of year, mainly for three reasons. One is, you would not have shepherds out in their fields uh, during the coldest time of the year in the Northern Hemisphere. The climate in Israel is very much like here in Northern California. And around the 25th of December, it is cold, it is wet, there's almost no grass in the fields. And so that's one thing. Another thing is the uh, Caesar would not have issued a tax requiring people to travel the coldest and darkest time of the year um, to uh, their place of origin so that they could uh, be registered and uh, ultimately pay more taxes. They usually do that when there was crops in the fields. It just was a lot more practical. So it's very unlikely that Caesar Augustus would issue that tax during that time. And the third reason, I think it's probably the best reason, we sort of know when Jesus was born because it tells us in Luke chapter 3 that Jesus was baptized as he began to be 30 years of age. Now, there's a reason for that because, well, King David started to rule at 30. Joseph went out over Egypt at 30. A priest could not begin to serve until he was 30. Christ began his ministry around his 30th birthday, and he was baptized. Now, we don't know what that date was, but we do know how long he ministered, and we do know when he died. Jesus died in the spring during the Passover, three and a half years later. So if you simply count back three and a half years from when he died, and you know he died in the spring, he was probably born in the fall. So uh, where did December 25th come from? It's pretty clear that it wasn't from the birth of Jesus. Um, matter of fact, you can read here in the Catholic Encyclopedia, it states Christmas was not among the earliest festivals of the church. Arrhenius and Tertullian omitted from their lists of feasts, and those authors lived in the third century AD. So, you know, up to 400 AD, no Christians were celebrating Christmas around the 25th of December. So what happened? Well, it's really something that's astronomical when you think about it. The, uh, the winter solstice is around December 21, 22. That means it's going to be the shortest days of the year. The days continue to get shorter and shorter and shorter until you get to the 21st. Then there's like a stable time for about three days where you don't really see any change in the days. The days begin to get noticeably longer around the 25th. So all over the Northern Hemisphere, in a number of cultures, that was a time of different celebrations. Yes, some used it for sun worship. Some did it because it was time of agriculture. Some celebrated because the days started getting longer again, and they were just glad that it wasn't going to be getting darker. It was going to be getting brighter. And so even in the Americas, among the Indians, in the northern hemispheres, everybody noticed the days started getting longer around the 25th of December. So when the church started trying to pick a date to celebrate Christ's birthday, they thought, well, this will be a good time. And we can exploit the fact that many of the pagan nations are taking that time off. You can even look among um, some of the uh, many festivals. For instance, the Romans had Saturnilla, and the Scandinavians had the Yule. The legends abound about some of the ancient deities that were born on the 25th of December. You've got Krishna, Vishnu, Mithra, which is Mithras, Horus, Hercules, Bacchus, Tammuz, Indra, Buddha, uh, just all over the Northern Hemisphere, as I said. So um, they picked this time because they thought it would be the best time when they could try to evangelize some of the um, pagans that were in the kingdom. Now, I don't think that's the best reason to pick a date. Uh, I do sort of understand it. For example, if I'm going to China and I'm doing an evangelistic meeting, we always look at their calendar to find out when can I do a meeting when they will not be working and be able to come. And suppose that uh, all of the Chinese were taking off the week of Buddha's birthday uh, because it's a holiday. That'd be a great time for me to do an evangelistic meeting because they're not preoccupied and they could come. So I could exploit that time uh, to reach the pagans. And, um, you know, Paul uses this principle in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. He said, for though I am free, this is 1 Corinthians 9, 19, for though I am free from all men, I've made myself a servant to all that I might win the more. 
And to the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might win the Jews. And to those who are under the law, as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without law, as without law, not being without the law towards God, but under the law towards Christ, that I might win those who are without law. Meaning, I do what I can to accommodate the Jews to reach the Jews. I do what I can to accommodate the Gentiles to reach the Gentiles. But I don't break God's law. That's the principle. And he said, to the weak I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by some means save some. And so there's a principle that as far as possible, Christians should try to take advantage of whatever local cultures might be to reach them, as long as it does not require sacrificing a biblical principle. Now, Christians should not be involved in the pagan trappings of Christmas. Santa Claus is not real. Uh, we shouldn't be making a deal about reindeer and burning Yule logs. Now, someone's going to ask about the Christmas tree. Christmas tree. People often go to Jeremiah chapter 10, and they read this passage. It begins in verse 2. For the customs of the people are futile. For one cuts a tree from the forest, the work of hands of the workmen with the axe. They decorate it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and hammers so that it will not topple. People say, ah, there's a Christmas tree. They are upright like a palm tree. They cannot speak. They must be carried because they cannot go by themselves. Do not be afraid of them. They cannot do evil, nor can they do good. Is Jeremiah saying that you should not cut a tree and decorate it? No. They were talking about the pagan practice where they would cut down a tree, take a block of the tree, carve it into a god, plate it with gold and silver. They had legs and mouths and eyes, but they couldn't see, they couldn't speak, they couldn't walk. You had to carry them. People don't carry around Christmas trees. So this really has nothing to do with a Christmas tree, though I've heard it used that way many times. And I've not seen too many people, I mean, if you have a bouquet of flowers in your house because you like the look and you like the fragrance, that's fine. But uh, if I see people praying to their flowers, or if I saw a person praying to their tree, so having holiday ornamentation is not a sin of itself. Now, in our church here in Granite Bay, we typically don't put up a Christmas tree. There would not be anything morally wrong with that, but there's a principle in the Bible. Paul says that uh, don't do anything that's going to make your brother stumble. And, uh, for example, he said, if eating meat sacrificed to an idol, even if it's a clean type of meat, is going to make your brother stumble, then don't do it. And, uh, of course, I'm a vegetarian, but it's a principle that you don't want to do anything. And so, yeah, we certainly don't need Christmas trees. And if some people think that it's connected with idolatry, then don't do it. So when it comes to should a Christian celebrate Christmas, obviously we should stay away from the things that are pagan. But if the world is talking about the birth of Christ, and if the birth of Christ and the incarnation is a biblical subject, if there is a good time for us to expand on that, to enhance that teaching, by all means, do it then. Um, Thanksgiving is a great time of year for Christians to enhance the biblical teaching, to focus on, to expand on the biblical teaching of gratitude and praise. And so if the world is all focusing during this time of year on the first coming of Jesus, what a great opportunity for us to talk about the first coming of Jesus and point them to the second coming of Jesus. Um, it says, for instance, in Romans chapter 14, this is not obligatory. Paul says in verse 5, one person esteems or regards one day above another, another esteems every day alike. Let each one be fully convinced in his own mind. He that observes the day, he observes it to the Lord. Don't do it to Santa Claus. <laughs> and he who does not observe the day, to the Lord he does not observe it. There's no requirement to remember these days. Now, keep in mind, the word pagan isn't always sinful. Pagan simply means it, it's a cultural thing. There's a lot of cultural things we do that did not come from the Bible that are not necessarily sinful. But if there's a pagan practice that conflicts with a biblical principle, then you should stay away from that. And so, anyway, well, with that background, friends, I hope it helps a little bit. You just pray and, you know, anything that's not of faith, don't do it. Uh, but if in faith, if you can uh, take advantage of this time of year to be a witness to your neighbors, to, to share gifts, to focus on the first coming of Christ and the incarnation and bring glory to God, by all means, uh, be all things to all men that you might reach more for Christ. God bless you. Hope that's helpful. And keep amazing facts in your prayers during this time of year.